Now we need to study the addition of alcohols to aldehydes and ketones. The product of these reactions are hemiacetals and acetals. A hemiacetal is a product in which you will observe a carbon, which was the carbonyl, bonded to an OR, which is coming from an alcohol, and that the oxygen that was the carbonyl has been reduced to a hydroxyl group. In the acetal, we will see that the carbon that was the carbonyl is now bonded to two OR groups coming from the alcohol. In all nomenclature, there was a distinction by calling the compounds from aldehydes hemiacetal. If what is bonded to the carbonyl was a hydrogen, the name was a hemiacetal. But if the carbonyl compound was a ketone, in other words, R, R, carbonyl, then the product was called a hemiketol. In the same way, if the acetol was coming from a maldehyde because of the presence of the hydrogen, this was called an acetol, and if it was from a ketone, this was called a ketol. In these days, there is no distinction, and both products from aldehydes and ketones are named as hemiacetals and acetols. If I want to add methanol to an aldehyde, the very first step that I need to do is to break the double bond. This addition takes place in the presence of water. Once the double bond is broken, we need to add one extra bond to the carbon and one bond to the oxygen. I will need to rewrite the molecule, carbons and oxygen and hydrogen, keeping the frame of the molecule. And because this is an addition reaction, I will need to add one bond to the carbon and one bond to the oxygen. Now will be time to add the part of the alcohol. And the alcohol molecule need to add the OR part to the carbon and the hydrogen to the oxygen. It is obvious that this oxygen with a set of lone pairs will be more attractive to the partially positively charged hydrogen and that this carbon will be attracted to the partial negative charge oxygen. This product is a hemiacetol because it's a carbon that is bonded to an OH and an OR. Hemiacetols are in general unstable and they will exist in equilibrium with the mixture of the aldehyde and the alcohol. With the exception of monosaccharides, carbohydrates, hemiacetols are unstable. In acidic conditions, if an excess of the alcohol is used, this hemiacetol will continue reacting to produce an acetol. In this reaction, the oxygen that was the carbonyl of this aldehyde will act as a living group. This OH will combine with the proton from the catalyst to be removed as a molecule of water. If this hydroxyl group combines with this hydrogen from the catalyst to form a molecule of water, this carbon will be lacking a bond. We have a carbon-oxygen, a methoxy that will be electron-rich, and a carbon that is lacking electrons that will be a good combination to produce the acetol. Observe that the carbon-hydrogen from the aldehyde remains, and also that the rest of the carbons from the aldehyde are still present. Also, the OR that was attached during the formation of the hemiacetol, it is still present. Now we see that this methoxy group can attack the carbon that is lacking a bond. That is, a brand new covalent bond will be formed between the second molecule of the alcohol group and the carbon that was the carbonyl. 
At the end, the carbon that was the carbonyl will be attached to two parts of the alcohol. In summary, the reaction between aldehydes and alcohols in aqueous solutions will exist in equilibrium forming a hemiacetal, which is unstable, with the alcohol and the aldehyde. If the reaction is done with an excess of alcohol in acidic conditions, the hemiacetal will continue reacting to produce an acetal. You will know that this is coming from an aldehyde because the carbon that bonds two OR groups is also bonded to a hydrogen. For clarification, I want to do the same reaction of methanol but with a ketone to produce a hemiacetal. The process is the same. You will observe that we have an OH and an OR and that the carbon that was part of the frame is now bonded to two R groups. If we observe on the second part, in the presence of an acid, an excess of the alcohol will continue reacting to produce an acetol, which means that the carbon bonded to two alkyl groups is now bonded to two alkoxy, or two OR groups coming from an alcohol. We have said that in practice, hemiacetals are often very unstable and cannot be isolated. However, when the OH of an alcohol group is present in the same molecule that contains the carbonyl of an aldehyde or a ketone, the hemiacetal is stable. To make it simple and easy to follow, I have written the same molecule twice, reorienting the position of the carbons, and that is due to the freedom of rotation between carbon-carbon single bonds. If you observe, we have the molecule of 3-hydroxybutanol, because this is an aldehyde. I still have the same number of carbons, oxygens, and hydrogen, we still have the hydroxyl group in carbon number 3. Without looking at the mechanism, just recall that this is an addition reaction and that we will need to break this double bond and we will need to add a brand new bond to the oxygen and a brand new bond to the carbon. After we have done that, then this oxygen will be added to the carbon that was the carbonyl. We have added one brand new bond to the oxygen and one brand new bond to what was the carbon from the carbonyl. Next will be to make a covalent bond between the carbonyl and this oxygen. So we will connect this oxygen to what was the carbonyl. But if we add the oxygen to the carbonyl with this hydrogen, then oxygen will have three bonds. And we understand that oxygen must have two covalent bonds and two lone pairs. So we will need to remove this hydrogen, which is going to be added to this oxygen. At the end, we can describe this formation of a hemiacetal as an intramolecular cyclization because the OH of the same molecule has formed a heterocyclic part within the same molecule. What was the carbonyl now is an OH and part of the rest of the molecule is an OR. To make it real simple, break the double bond, add this oxygen to the carbon number one, and move this hydrogen to be bonded to the oxygen that will be lacking one bond. Even though it looks a little bit complex, you can identify these type of substances as hemiacetal because this carbon is bonded to an OH and an OR. Sometimes the students get confused when the hydrogen is not written. 
You need to identify this as being a skeletal form that contains an OH, an OR, an R group, and a hydrogen when it was coming from an aldehyde. This hemiacetol can continue reacting in the presence of alcohol in acidic conditions. In this case, this OH will be a living group. It will be forming an intermediate that is lacking a bond. In this case, we observe that the OH is being removed with one of the hydrogens as a molecule of water. The methanol now has an opportunity to add a methoxy group to the carbon that is lacking a bond. Observe that the reaction here is a little bit more complex because the first reaction was between an alcohol that was part of the aldehyde forming a hemiacetol. The second part of the reaction is when a second alcohol reacts with the hemiacetol. And we have at the end a removal of one molecule of water. This is an acetol because now we have one OR and a second OR and the hydrogen indicating that this was an aldehyde. This is a second example of the formation of a hemiacetol using a ketone that at the same time is also an alcohol. The name of this substance is a 5-hydroxy-2-pentanone because the carbonyl is in carbon number 2 is the carbon that is more oxidized. We will proceed in similar way than in the reaction using an aldehyde with the alcohol group. First thing is rewrite the molecule, making sure that the oxygen is positioned to attack the carbon that is the carbonyl. Because this is an addition reaction, our first step again is to break this double bond. The next step is to add a brand new bond to the oxygen and one brand new bond to the carbon that was the carbonyl. Now observe that we have created a brand new bond between the carbon and the oxygen and the next will be to move this hydrogen to give an octet to the oxygen. This product is now a hemiacetol because this carbon is bonded to an OH and an OR. This reaction is going to be of extreme importance in the chapter of carbohydrates. Monosaccharides will exist as hemiacetol cyclic structures. If we add ethanol to this hemiacetol, we will continue reacting by removing a molecule of water with this oxygen and adding the OR group to the carbon that was the carbonyl. Observe that the methoxy part from the alcohol has replaced the OH and the one molecule of water has been removed. Since these reactions are reversible, hydrolysis, which means addition of water, to molecules to break a bond will produce the starting materials, that is, aldehydes, ketones, and alcohols. As a summary, a hydroxy ketone was transformed into a hemiacetol that continued reacting with an alcohol to produce an acetol. This is an acetol coming from a ketone because what is attached to two OR groups is also bonded to two carbons.